Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New East in Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East, St. Augustine. Back in the 1980s, my homes and offices in Silver Spring, Maryland, Casper, Wyoming, and Laramie, Wyoming, we are littered with my drawings and my blueprints of the prototypes of two new massively parallel processing supercomputers that I invented and that I constructively reduced to practice. Those two new supercomputers that encircled a globe and encircled it in a manner the internet encircled a globe, they are named Philip Emma Aguale Hyper Ball Supercomputer and Philip Emma Aguale Cosmic Ball Supercomputer. I visualized my never before seen Cosmic Ball Supercomputer as a small copy of the internet that is located on the North Pole. That Cosmic Ball Supercomputer was an ensemble of processors that was not a new computer per se. That cosmic ball supercomputer was a global network of processors and was a new supercomputer de facto. That cosmic ball supercomputer was a new internet de facto, because it tightly encircled a globe and tightly encircled it in the manner the internet tightly encircled the earth. At its supercomputing core, my cosmic ball supercomputer comprised of commodity off-the-shelf processors or identical processors that were mass-marketed for everyday computers. For that reason, my cosmic supercomputer was independent of processor technology. The cosmic supercomputer could be continuously updated with the newest commodity of the shelf processors. To send and receive emails, and to do so synchronously and across, 65,536 commodity off-the-shelf processors or across identical computers was like looking at God in the face to experimentally discover the fastest computations demanded that I optimize my use of every nut and bolt inside my new faster supercomputer as well as explore every hidden corner within my new supercomputer. Sending and receiving 64 binary thousand emails and sending them at once instead of sending them one by one is at the granite core of how I invented the parallel processing technology that makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest and is at the granite core of my invention of how and why to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer. I visualize the gaps in the global network of processors to be filled. I visualized my email messages as, as teaching the 65,000 
536 pieces back together, I discovered that it's a necessary condition that the fastest floating point arithmetical computation must be preceded by the fastest email communication. For the fastest emailing across my small internet, I visualized my complete petroleum reservoir as an ensemble of 65,536 petroleum reservoirs. I used my message passing computational fluid dynamics code to reassemble the petroleum reservoir simulation for each small petroleum reservoir and put them back together as my original petroleum reservoir. In my massively parallel supercomputer coding, I assigned the decimal email address, quote unquote, E, to one of my 64 binary thousand petroleum reservoirs. I assigned that email address as the unique string of 16 zeros and ones that's the binary identification number of a processor or a computer. I taxed each processor or each computer to only send and receive email messages and do so to and from the processors or the computers that corresponded to the two petroleum reservoirs that are adjacent to it and with the email address, quote unquote, E minus one, and the email address, quote unquote, E plus one. On the small internet that I invented and that I visualized as a global network of 64 binary thousand processors, or as a global network of as many computers, the processor or the computer named E may not be directly connected to either the processor or the computer named E minus one and or, and or the processor or the computer named E plus one. My one-to-one -one correspondence between my 64 binary thousand processors or the as many computers and my 64 binary thousand petroleum reservoir models or the as many blocks of oil fields, oil fields. First, my email messages that had to be delivered to distant processors or distant computers to be delivered along the shortest possible route. Doing so enabled me to discover the fastest speeds in email communication across fast interconnect paths that I executed on the 4th of July of 1989 and executed across my new internet that is a global network of 65,000 536 commodity of the shelf processors. Doing so enabled me to experimentally discover the fastest speeds in arithmetical computation that I executed on the 4th of July of 1989 and executed across my massively parallel processing supercomputer that's de facto a small copy of the internet. Doing so was how I experimentally discovered the shortest time to solution and the new fastest supercomputer. Not doing so makes as much sense as a letter built to an address that's just one mile away to travel around the world before arriving one mile away. On the 4th of July of 1989, the U.S. Independence Day, I sent my emails that each contained my computational fluid dynamics code and sent them 
through the shortest path, which made it possible for me to experimentally discover how solving a million problems at once or in parallel makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. And for me to experimentally invent how to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer that encircled a globe and encircled it in the manner the internet encircled a globe. Back in the 1970s and 80s, it was often written that parallel processing is a huge waste of everybody's time. In the 1980s, I was the sole full-time programmer of the most massively parallel processing machine ever built. That parallel processing machine that was rejected by every supercomputer programmer except I is the first precursor to today's modern supercomputer. That massively parallel processing machine was the most complex computing engine, engine ever imagined. In the 1970s, that parallel processing supercomputer was as futuristic as the quantum computer was in the 1980s. As its lone wolf programmer, my two grand challenge questions were these. First, where does my massively parallel processing machine draw its com fastest computing speed for solving the toughest problems in computational mathematics? Second, where does my massively parallel processing machine draw its fastest email communication speed for communicating the toughest problems in computational physics. On the 4th of July of 1989, the US Independence Day, I experimentally discovered the answers to both grand challenge questions of mathematics and physics. Those experimental discoveries of how to massively parallel process across an ensemble of processors enabled me to forge a path to the farthest frontier of computing, that is the modern supercomputer. <laughs>